Are you right now at the verge of giving up on life? Do you battle condemnation and feel inadequate? Is there a part of you that doubts whether God truly loves you? Would you like to better comprehend God's love for you? Life is full of uncertainties, but in God, there is an assurance of a beautiful future. Be inspired as you receive God's word that will stir up faith and confidence in the love that God has for you. Join us today on The Covenant Lights. Hallelujah. You are the bed of glory. Be to God. Wherever you are this morning, welcome once again you are the to the covenant light. As you worship over the next few minutes, you go ahead and send this link to as many people as you can. No matter what you time or day you are listening, go ahead and send this link. You are changing you are lives, you're making a difference. Are we are here on mission. And this is what the mission is all about. So send this link to as many as you can. And let's give people opportunity to be part of this. Hallelujah. You are the rose of sorrow. You are my peace in the midst of the storm. You are the air I breathe. Oh Lord, you are. You are the air I breathe. Oh Lord, you are How precious you are Para no sopra de Thank you for your touch and your warm embrace. Your joy fills my heart. Lord, I'm so thankful. Lord, I thank you for your touch. joy fills my heart. Lord, I'm so grateful. You are the Go ahead and worship Him wherever you are. Father, we honor you. We come on the premise of who you are, not who we are in ourselves, but who we are in you. Hey, you are the air I breathe. You are, you are the air I breathe. Oh Lord, you are, you are the air 
Worship Him wherever you are. Go ahead, give Him praise. Lift up your hands to Him. Make that connection with God right now, wherever you are. Father, we honor you and worship you. Lord, I come before you personally. And I stand boldly to say, I come not in the, on the premise of my right standing, my righteousness. For I do not qualify to stand before you on myself and in myself. But I come on the premise of my right standing with Jesus. And on this basis, Lord, I demand, as Jesus deserves, all of heaven, all of your power, all of your glory, all of your anointing, all of the gifts of the Spirit in manifestation. Thank you for this. Feel every home, every life that is connected right now with your presence, the manifestation of your presence. Walk your walk within us, Lord, and be all by yourself glorified. In the name of Jesus, my soul is a case of the Le koja vranande geselia ma koja. Malieno sperianande gesterialo pregedisto paramai. Ne kora brahaya. Glorious handshakes. Glorious handshakes. Salibros te kelibros te kelibros te. Glorious handshakes. <laughs> Oh, Palibra Hashekelianande. That, that, that just came up in my spirit. And the Lord is showing me, and I prophesy, that God is bringing connections that will settle issues and connections that will raise Handshakes settle disputes. And so issues. God is bringing bridges. God is bringing connections to settle issues being raised. But not only that. Handshakes connections that is the beginning of new things when a contract is signed people will stand up and shake hands 
when a job has been offered, people will stand up and shake hands. It's a welcome to a new level. And I speak by the Spirit of God. These two things, very clear in my spirit, are released upon everyone under the sound of my voice. Handshakes to settle pending disputes, things that have been going on, crazy stuff going on. And now God is building bridges and the handshake and it is over the trouble is over the trial is over but it's also a handshake that is raising new issues but not terrible not evil issues but it's the beginning of new things the beginning of new levels the beginning of a new contract the beginning of a new job the beginning of a new place the beginning of a new location a new vocation the beginning of things in the name of jesus the Spirit of God just brought that. It's a gift, folks. You don't have to earn it. You just receive it. You just say amen and you believe and, and go with it. And it is as it has been spoken. Father, we thank you for the handshakes that end trouble and the handshakes that causes new beginnings. We receive this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we ask you for revelation knowledge to dawn upon our hearts as we look into your word in Jesus' mighty and precious name. And everyone said, Amen. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, we're going to run through. We're talking about mission this week. Don't forget, next week, we're going to be talking about the rewards of mission. God spoke some amazing things to me um, that are... They are your... reward for being on mission they cannot but happen when a person takes a stand and one of the things he said in my spirit we're going to talk about next week is that scripture about will he not therefore avenge them who cry to him night and day avenge means restore justice who cry to him night and day Whatever you do, don't miss next week. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Because there are certain things that are justice for the person who is on mission. And that statement, will he not therefore avenge them? Will he not therefore restore justice? He will. And that place of refusing to back down, crying to God day and night. And I know some of you will have a problem with that phrase, but I just quote in scripture crying to him there. We're going to see what a cry is really. A real cry to God. It's not, it's not what you think. Don't miss next week. But this week we've been looking at trying to tie together the practice of mission. Trying to tie together what you do when you're on mission. We said number one, we called it the A, B, C, D, E of mission. Acknowledge. A, acknowledge that you've been sent and set. B, begin to observe who God has planted around you just for them to see your light. If you're a city set on a hill, like A says, acknowledge that you have been sent and set. You are a city set. God has set your, your location and vocation and set your time to be this time. You are born for such a time as this. Well, the Bible tells us that. Then if that is the case, B is begin to observe those who are in the hill, in the valleys around you. You are the city set on a hill so that, there are, so that the cities in the valley can see you. Who are those that God has planted around you just for the purpose of viewing and seeing your light. Then, with the sea, is claim them, command the enemy to take his hands off them and call for laborers into the harvest. See, Claim them. That's prayer now. Begin to pray for those people. 
you have accepted you are sent and set you have began to observe the people who would observe your light if you shined now first thing is begin to pray for them claim them command the enemy to take his hands off them and call for laborers to be sent to them we thought about this you can go back and look at our teachings this week so far from from tuesday and then he says and then the d we looked at that yesterday demonstrate the life of god through faith and love and now we come to the last one the e engage with the person of peace and their house engage with the person of peace and their house let's look at the scriptures where this is concerned luke chapter 10 from verse 5 to 11 and into whatsoever house you enter first say peace be to this house now a house is a network of relationships right a house is a network of people that are connected by something house here represents people connected by something um, in a typical house, there is there is a a, a a connecting relationship. So, uh, 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 some of it, blood, family. In other words, you can have a father and mother, brothers and sisters. Then you, you have servants uh, um, in that house. Now, that house has servants. Those servants are not blood relationship, but they are connected. They are part of that household. They are connected by a relationship. It's a network of relationships. And you can have you can have different sets. You can have an uncle. You can have different sets of people. You can have a friend of one of the kids in the house there staying with them. Back then, in the day of Jesus, a house was more than just a nuclear family. It was an extended family. Because they lived together. And if, even right now, even when you go to villages and all that, you find that extended family staying together and each one having his or their uh, our own space within that extended house. And that's the way it was in the day of Jesus. And so, it's, so when Jesus says house, you need to think not just of father, mother, brother and sister, but think of an extended group of people connected by varying relationships. So one way we can say that today is networks. So, into whatsoever network you enter. So, you are actually involved in several networks. Remember, you were sent and set. There are different networks that you've been, you have been connected to already. And there are some that God will begin to prompt you to enter into. We need to learn to enter into networks deliberately for the sake of the gospel. Market Women Association, that's a network. Residents Association in your neighborhood, that's a network. Um, the students in the school you attend, that's a network. The classmates in your class, that's a network. The course mates for the course you are doing in the university, that's a network. All kinds of networks. Your neighborhood has networks. And so you, you begin to enter networks for that purpose. We're talking about this person of peace and how to go, go about engaging them now. And then look at what the next verse says, verse 6. What, into whatever house you enter, verse 5 says, First say, peace be to this house. In other words, don't blend in. Don't enter the house and just be part of the house. No, you need to make your light known. You need to make your vocalize. And vocalizing there does not necessarily mean that you said something. It is that you manifested. You didn't blend in. Peace be to this house. So that if the person of peace is there, they will be drawn to you. And so that will be going into a place and deliberately in their face living this life, praying over your food, refusing to make certain comments, you know, adjusting something that was said. Oh, this person is such a bad person. He, you know, he's, they, are, they are backbiting someone. And you are the one that said, ah, and he has lovely eyes. He has lovely eyes. You refuse to be part of that. You don't blend in. You go in there not to take sides, but to take over. Keep that at the back of your mind. You are not there to take sides. You are there to take over. And so don't blend in. Say peace be to this house. That also includes praying for them. One of the ways you release peace is praying for a people. 
And he said, you know, the Bible says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And then he says, now while you are doing that, while you are living this life and praying for them, verse 6 says, if the son of peace be there, using, by saying, if the son of peace be there, he's acknowledging that it is possible that there is no son of peace in that place for you. And you have to be okay with that. And you, you are expected to move on if there is no son of peace there. And you wonder, okay, if there's no son of peace there, why did God allow me to join? He wants you. Now, you have declared peace over that house. You have prayed for that house. You have labored there. Another person may now come there and reap. That's okay. That person coming there to reap has been praying for God to send laborers to the people that he will, he will reap. And you are one of such laborers. And you also have people you are praying for and all that. And laborers have been sent to them who didn't reap there. But you are going there to reap because your son of peace is there. Your person of peace is there. So by saying if the son of peace is there, we need to accept that there will be several scenarios where we do not get any results in a particular location or a network. And it's okay. Be okay with that. Don't be discouraged. If the son of peace be there, it says your peace shall rest upon it. Rest upon that network. If not, it shall turn to you again. And so Jesus actually expected them to know when their peace rested on the network and when it did not. Jesus expected them to know when their peace rested on a, in a group of people and when it did not. And they were to know if there's a son of peace there by that. And how do you know if your peace rested? It's if they receive you. That network, receiving your disposition not you blending in if you're a student and you never you never declared who you are you never announced that you're a believer you never manifested the truth before them you are not praying for them you just went for your classes and went home and they accepted you because of that that's not you being received but when you announce yourself when you manifest the truth when you position as a person here to reach these people, when you announce your difference and not blending in, and yet they receive you, they are at peace with you. Can you see that? They are at peace with you. There is a son of peace in that place. There is a son of peace in that place. When I, when I got into the master's program I'm doing now, they asked me, what do you do? I said, well, I'm a life coach. I help people at, attain their goals and become what they were supposed to be. That was first week. And so they were like, oh, yeah, nice, nice. That's good, that's good, that's good. And then after a while, about a week or two later, he said, what is your, what are your, we were having a class on strategy. He said, what, what's your strategic goal over the next five years? And I boldly, I said, to change the way people see God. Everybody turned and looked at me. They were like, we thought you were a life coach. Yeah, I'm a life coach. I help people achieve their goals and become what they're supposed to be. My, stra my, my, my strategic goal in the next five years is to change the way people see God from the, the, this God who we cannot understand, does whatever he wants, whenever he wants it, to the God who is love, the Father heart of God. I want people to know that God loves them tremendously and has paid every price. I'm talking to my class. You see, that's me saying peace be to this house. Now, after I've declared who I am and declared my stand and my beliefs and, and li started leaving it in front of them, do they still receive me? And yes, they began to say, oh, I became pastor, 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 you know. And, and uh, they, they would say things like, oh, our pastor is in the house. Just a few, last week we had um, an ethics simulation where we uh, um, pretended, simulated a scenario where uh, uh, we, had, we were all running different companies and we had to make ethical decisions. And my own group were like, okay, we have a pastor amongst us. We cannot make an unethical decision. And so we were making ethical decisions each round for about 13 rounds. And we came out second um, out of the whole set groups of people that... Um, and then they were like, oh, ethics pays, you know. So what I'm trying to say is, at the end of the day, when you declare yourself, are you received? If you're received, there's a son of peace in that place. If your peace rests upon the network, there's a son of peace there. 
Now, verse 7. And in the same house remain. So, when you see that, now get into that place. And begin to labor there. And begin to serve there. And begin to bless there. It says, for the laborer is worthy. So, you now begin to labor. Begin to connect with the people. One after the other. Then he says in verse 8. And into whatever city you enter and they, re- and they receive you, it's such things as I said before you. Then he says in verse 9, heal the sick there. See, that's the labor now. Begin to labor. Begin to find the needs and the people that are going through stuff and start praying for them. And, you know, start meeting needs. All right. This idea of a person of peace, you see it so amazingly repeated in the uh, 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 New Testament. You see it with Jesus and Andrew and how Andrew now connected Jesus. Andrew was the person of peace, connected Jesus with uh, uh, um, Peter, with James, with John. You see it with Paul and Lydia. Uh, 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 When Paul went to Ephesus and and with Philippi rather and met with the believers there and uh, the, the people who were gathered there and was preaching to them. And then Lydia became the person of peace through which a whole network of people were connected um, to, to, became saved and, and, and opened up a whole house of networks to, to Paul. You see it also in several instances where Paul will go to a city. There will be those who will reject him. Then there will be those who accepted. Then he will gather them together, in one case in the school of Tyrannus, and began to teach them there. He always focused on the person of peace. When he found the persons of peace, he narrowed down to them and didn't bother with the, the rest. We also need to learn to do that. Glory to God. You know, pastors, let me say this to you. As you go on, there will be people who will move on. There will be people who will leave. There will be people who will no longer feel connected to you. And there's a problem. When pastors feel they, they, they can't move on. Child of God, let me free you from that condemnation. You, when you find that there are people who are eager to embrace you and there are people who are not so eager anymore, embrace those who are eager to embrace you. Jesus said, draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh to you. Because those ones eager to embrace you now may not always be eager to embrace you. But in that time that they are eager to embrace you, you have the greatest opportunity to impact them. So impact those ones at that time. Impact those who are ready to embrace you and what you stand for. Impact them at that time. And if down the road they are no longer feeling that way, it's okay. There will be some other people. Impact at that time those ones who are embracing. Never pursue after and become discouraged because of someone or some people who are no longer embracing. This is very critical. Over the years as a pastor, I've seen pastors become so discouraged. Oh, I poured so much into this person. I gave so much to this person. No, you you poured so much, yes. But you were working for Jesus, not for that person. And Jesus still records what you have poured into that person. And your reward is there. I don't know why I'm saying this to someone. But somebody needed to hear that and be free. Move on. Move on. Glory be to God. And you see that here. Jesus said... When they are not receiving you, get move on. Get the dust off your feet and move on. Because there's a people ready to embrace you. Alright. Um, I, w- I want to close this with an example. Um, just one example. Because some people wonder how this plays out in real life. So here is a set of conversations. That are in, in my in my um, class, um, one of the persons of peace. After I began to be me, manifesting the truth, doing me in that course. Now I'm beginning to have a few people just, you know, stepping up to ask and question a few things. So here's one of them. So he sends me. Um, a, 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 a screenshot of a, a, a movie currently on Netflix called God's Favorite Idiot. God's Favorite Idiot on Netflix. And he said, quite interesting, huh? 
So he saw me watching it one day in class before the lectures. And he says, what's your perspective on it, especially being full-time in the ministry? You see, I had to show myself I could be in that class quietly and nobody knows and this person would never reach out to me with this. I had to be me. You have to manifest the truth in all these networks. You have to manifest the word of God. That's what the truth is. Thy word is truth. John chapter 17. You have to declare who you are and be you publicly. Let your light so shine before men. So knowing who I am now, he says, what's your perspective on it? I said, well, it's just entertainment. No theological or spiritual element to all, or, or, at all to it. I like the idea that God uses idiots. And that's the only thing I can take from it spiritually. That is true. Apart from that, and as, and, and as an entertainment thing, it is great. I enjoyed it. And he said, oh, quite interesting. Here's another conversation. You know, there's something I've been thinking about in the Bible. When Jacob manipulated his father, father-in-laws, uh, father-in-laws goats and sheep so that they were born with blemishes for his personal gain. Was that not corruption or was it corruption? Then I said, um, I, I put it Genesis chapter 30 verse 27 to 28. Please listen to me, Laban replied. I have become wealthy for the Lord has blessed me because of you. Tell me how much I owe you. Whatever it is, I'll pay it. So I said, and I, made, I, I, I gave him three points. I said, number one, Laban acknowledged that he got the wealth because of Jacob. Number two, he had gone many years without compensating Jacob. So there was already an imbalance. There was already corruption that needed to be corrected. There was already an injustice that needed to be corrected. There was already an unethical practice that, was already, that, was, that needed to be corrected. And verse three, and number three, the manipulation that Jacob did, I put that in quotes, was to correct an imbalance that was per- and was permitted by God. So that, that thing that happened was to bring back justice, not to cause an injustice. Um, and was permitted by God because he hates injustice. It is much like a government seizing a company's assets to pay the workers who have been unpaid. But can you see, I've never thought about that as corruption. I've never thought about, oh, that's unethical. You know, to, you know, <laughs> but that's conversations have begun. I've not yet told him he needs to give his life to Christ. I've not asked him about his faith, but this is one of several. Some, someone else came to, I could read several to you. Uh, you know, I, I had to be married for 20 years. Uh, uh, um, I, I also declared that because it was not a very common thing here. So you always have to declare that difference. You always have to declare. When they say there's a casting down, you say there's a lifting up. So that they can come and ask you why. And you say it. You don't keep quiet about it. You say it right there. And be okay with being persecuted for saying it. And so when I said, oh, I've been married for 20 years. Uh, the, the, last, this month was our 20th year anniversary. Whoa, wow, that's not very common. And all that, okay. One guy came to me and says, I'm, I've been married for three years now. And my wife and I are having fun, but we're wondering where the problem is. Where would the problem will be? What are the things you should be working on right now in our third year? Oh, okay. Now, that's my second potential person of peace. They are not yet a person of peace, but there's a potential because they are coming closer. So, how do you know when a person is a potential person of peace? Either of these three things begins to happen. They like you. They listen to you. They are willing to serve you in the gospel. Either of these three things is a potential. Either one of them creates a potential person of peace. After you've declared yourself, someone there, people, some people there still like you and they even drew closer because you have declared yourself. They even drew closer. Oh, that's a potential person of peace. They like you now. They listen to you. Maybe you say, okay, guys, um, I'm, I want to just, can we just be meeting to pray once every, every week um, online for 20 minutes? And they say, okay. Can you, who, who wants to come with me to church? They say, okay. Potential person of peace. Now, when you have all three in place, 
That is a person of peace. Not a potential now. That is a person of peace. So when some when, do, notice those who begin to like you, those are potential persons of peace. Or who are listening to you. Who pay attention when you are talking and doing you. Those are potential persons of peace. Or who are willing to support you, even though they have not accepted what you are preaching. But they are willing, like Lydia. Lydia had not yet given her life to Jesus. But she said, Paul, if you find favor, if I have found favor with you, come stay at my place. They were willing to let their possessions be used and utilized for the sake of the gospel. They are willing to serve you with their time, with their money, with their resources, where the gospel is concerned. Glory be to God. And when you find those people, those are potentials, you continue working on them. Don't rush it. Keep praying for them and continue working with them. I have two of my persons of peace that will be in church this Sunday for the first time. These ones I just read to you, I've not even invited them yet to church. I'm still praying with them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, I hope this is clear. Um, We're going to keep talking about this. Um, Today is Friday. It's the day that we receive um, an offering. And we worship God with our seeds. And I want you, wherever you are, if you've been blessed this week, this is the uh, Monday we began with praying for the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and today, you've learned, you've been instructed. It's not man, really, because the Bible says you don't need that any man teach you. But the anointing. So there's an anointing on me. It's really God that has been teaching and instructing you. And so that anointing is teaching you. And now today you have the opportunity to say, Father, thank you. I honor you and worship you. And you give towards that anointing. And God in turn takes that resource you have given and uses it to reach more people. And the circle continues. You never break that circle. Let him that is taught the word. Communicate to him that teacheth in all good things. Why? So that the word can continue to be taught. So that others can be reached as well. And when those ones are reached, they support that that work and others are reached. And the, the whole world gets to hear the gospel. You never break the circle. So if you've been blessed this week, go ahead and um, give uh, 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 and worship God with your seeds. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. And I pray for everyone that is giving right now um, that you will multiply to them their seeds in return as harvest in Jesus' name. And we thank you for the privilege to take the seeds and utilize them here on earth for the propagation of the gospel. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. Normally, today we would have talked about finances, but because next week we are spending The whole of next week, talking about the rewards of being on mission. We're going to talk a lot about that then. So till then, remember, you are loved by God unconditionally. And by that love, you're experiencing his wisdom, power, and favor. So keep living in the consciousness of God's love for you. And do have a wonderful day today and a weekend ahead of you. In Jesus' name, amen.